Are you frustrated because your swing looks like this? Or like this? People often ask, is the kettlebell swing such a complicated exercise? Well, to a certain degree, yes. But with these 14 tips, I will help you to become a kettlebell swing wizard for the rest of your life. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Leberstark hier. Let's waste no time and jump straight into these 14 tips. Tip number one, you have to understand that there's three different styles. Style number one is heart style. Style number two is kettlebell sport. And style number three is a combination of the two and it's called the hybrid. Every style has its own swing variation. And if you love the detail and want to dive straight into these different variations that I believe are the most bang for your buck, then check out this video. Tip number two, learn and practice the hinge. The hinge is the most fundamental movement pattern that you will use when you engage in kettlebell training. Learn it and you will be safe. Miss out on it and you'll be frustrated. The hinge works like this. I push my hips back. My knees are unlocking, not bending. My upper body leans forward. I feel a tension in my posterior chain. I'm coming up. That's it. Down. If you're looking for a tool that may help you to get a better feeling for the hinge, then go get a stick. You put the stick behind you on the three movable parts on your spine. That is glutes, back, and neck. And now you push your hips back, upper body leans forward, and you don't want to lose contact. It's not supposed to look like this. It's supposed to look like this. Tip number three, memorize phase zero, and that is the triangle. The triangle has nothing to do with the Illuminati, but what it has to do with is the starting point before you engage in a swing. If you have a heavy kettlebell, let's say a 24 or a 28 dangling in front of you like this and then you try to start, this won't feel very good and it won't be the optimal starting point. So in order to engage with the pendulum motion and not waste the first rep, you want to stand in front of the kettlebell, then your feet connect with the bell, put them out, put them in, jump back, here you go, you got the triangle. Your feet are forming the bottom of the triangle and the kettlebell forms the top of the triangle. This phase is very important because you will need it whenever you engage in any ballistic kettlebell exercise. Tip number four, choose the easiest swing variation first and that is the hybrid hand-to-hand -hand swing. The hybrid hand-to-hand -hand swing will give you the most bang for your buck because most people have one or two kettlebells at home in a moderate weight range. These moderate weight ranges depending on your gender can be 12, 16, 20 or 24 and the hybrid hand-to-hand -hand swing will give you a very good volume for this particular weight range. In order to understand a ballistic exercise, we compartmentalize it into five phases when it comes to the swing. Phase zero, you just heard about it. This is the triangle phase. Phase one is the back swing. Arm connects with the body. Phase two, hip extension. This is where you use the power from your posterior chain and the kettlebell starts flying. Phase three is the hand over. You switch it from one hand to the other. Phase four, amortization. You let gravity do its thing and the kettlebell drops. And phase five, we're landing in the backswing again. It looks a little something like this. Tip number five, stop using your arms. Consider your arms to be like hooks. They're smooth, they're not tight, and they don't grab or hold on to something. You don't wanna muscle your swing. If you only use your arms, it's gonna look something like this, and before you know it, your arm will give out, it will burn, and you will have to stop. We have to understand that the swing engagement comes from the hinge. Tip number six, save your palm skin. Do not destroy it. Don't rip it and grip it. If you grab the kettlebell in a crush grip like this, you will destroy your palm skin. So in order to stop chaffing off your palm skin, you want to learn the finger grip. If the kettlebell is on the floor, you don't grab the kettlebell with your palm like in a crush grip. You grab the kettlebell with the root of your fingers, boom, and your thumb is either on top of the handle or it closes, depending on the size of your palm. And your pinky connects with 
the handle where it starts bending. Tip number seven, we're halfway through. You have to override your instincts. Instinct number one, grabbing and moving something with your hand automatically tells your brain that it has to engage the arm muscles. Don't do it. Instinct number two, in the amortization phase when the kettlebell drops, and gravity does its thing, we automatically pull our hips back too early. If something heavy falls between our legs, we instinctively pull them back because we want to protect what's down there. I do understand. Understand that the kettlebell is an extension of your arm. So your arm will connect with your business, but nothing bad will happen. You won't hurt yourself. Tip number eight, work on your Timing. When you work with the ballistic element, it is very unpredictable, and this takes time to understand it and to learn it. So the so-called arm-body connection is essential. When I start, I wanna fully connect my arm with my body. When I extend, this is where the arm disconnects. I take over, and I wanna immediately reconnect my arm with my body, and then go into the backswing. There's a cue that we're using, it is called maximize the time the arm is connected to your body and minimize the time the arm is disconnected from your body. Tip number nine, understand the details but don't overcomplicate them. Let's talk about wrist orientation. If you want to, you can swing with a front grip, with a transverse grip or with a back grip. At the end of the day, it is preference and it may influence the way you swing depending on how long you wanna swing and depending on how heavy the bell is. Understand the finger pointing. If you have a front grip, you wanna make sure that the finger points to the floor. If the wrist orientation changes a little bit, still keep in mind that your fingers are pointing down and the wrist is pointing towards you. So that way you will have automatically granted a safe transition point and a safe foundation for the clean and the snatch when you advance. Always follow the media line. You can use this stick to understand this concept. You stand shoulder width apart over the stick. And when you start swinging, you want to make sure that the bell travels in that medial line. Midsection or core engagement is essential, but you don't have to think about it all the time. What you want to make sure is when the kettlebell is flying and the hip is extended and you have a lot of force that is coming from your posterior chain, you want to engineer out the shear force that happens in your spine. So what you have to do is boom, tense your quads, tense your abdominals, and you're safe. Depending on the bell size and weight, your swing may look a little different, which is totally fine. If you choose the hybrid hand-to-hand -hand swing, I would always work with moderate weights. Don't go too heavy or otherwise your hinge will start to break and you will engage in a different kind of swing. Tip number 10, use drills for fine tuning. Drill number one is the bottle drill. Most people make the mistake that when they start engaging with a hinge, they automatically start bending their knees. This is not wrong. This is engaging in a different type of swing. However, if we want to follow the hybrid hand-to-hand -hand swing version, we want to stay in that hinge. The bottle between my legs makes sure that I don't start bending too much. As soon as I engage in too much of a knee bend, this is what happens. Instead of a bottle, I see people also use a second kettlebell. However, I do not advise it because you may damage your second Bell. Drill number two is the handoff drill. This will help you to stop generating momentum or torque in your wrist. Remember, we want to make sure that the finger points to the floor and the wrist points towards me. To engage in this drill properly, I recommend a single hand swing. That's what it looks like. Drill number three, Pavel will call it greasing the groove. You go through the exercise without any weights. Remember the five phases. Phase zero, triangle, back swing, hip extension, hand over, amortization, back swing. And now you keep going. Tip number 11, engage in the proper breathing technique. We call it power breathing. Pavel will call it breathing behind the shield. Make sure that your abdominals are tight and you want to emphasize when you breathe out 
And you don't want to emphasize when you breathe in. Sounds like this. You're almost spitting. As you have seen, I've placed my hands on my belly to feel how the abdominals are working. So when you engage the swing with the kettlebell, this is what the breathing looks and sounds like. When you swing for a little longer, you can also breathe two times. <laughs> Tip number 12, put in the work. You ask how many swings you have to do, ask Chuck Norris. He will tell you all of them. Make the swing a staple of your workout. Reps and reps and reps. This is what causes your technique to improve if you have the right information first. I would recommend to work for time because that way you will feel the flow of the hybrid hand-to-hand -hand swing when you engage in the hinge only. Start with 30 seconds, go up to one minute, up to two minutes, three, four, five. And once you've mastered five minutes, you can maybe upgrade the weight or even upgrade your time limit. Maybe go up to 10 minutes. Tip number 13, weight management. As you can see, I'm rocking with a 16 kilo. I am 70 kilo body weight, I'm a pretty lightweight dude. So the hybrid hand-to-hand -hand swing works for me until the 24 kilo. If I go heavier, I have to use a different version of the swing because my hinge starts to break down a little bit. So if you're stronger and you're massive, maybe your weight limit is a little bit above 24 or 28. But my recommendation for men would be maximum is probably 24, maybe 28 if you're really strong to engage properly in the hybrid hand-to-hand -hand swing. And for women, it would be 12, 16, maybe 20 if you're really strong. Tip number 14, if you've mastered the hybrid hand-to-hand -hand swing, you can check out the other versions as well. We have a hard style, single-handed or double-handed swing, and we have the kettlebell sport, single-handed swing. If you choose the hard style route, you engage in more of an explosive nature of training, and if you engage in the kettlebell sport swing, you're working more on the endurance side of things. There are also other factors and benefits that come along with these different swing variations. The reason why I recommend the hybrid is you get the best of both worlds. Bonus tip, if your upper back engages in a slightly kyphotic position, once your hip is extended and you're on top, that's totally fine. What you want to make sure does not happen is hyperextending the spine. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like it, consider subscribing if you want to see more kettlebell content. And if you're looking for a kettlebell program that builds you up from a beginner to a slowly advanced trainee in the course of about three months, and you maybe want to combine it with some easy to follow nutrition coaching, because maybe you want to lose weight or you want to get in shape, then check out 90 Days of Kettlebells. You'll find the link in the description. 14-day free trial included.